Hey guys, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. I have a really fun project for you today. We are making this wooden light up spider. Oh my gosh, I love this. And all we need is just four tools, well maybe three tools, <laughs> and some materials. I know most of you want to learn how to use power tools, so this video is actually a really good starter project for you. If you're a beginner and if you don't want to do a large project, this one is actually perfect. I'm going to walk you through step by step. This project is being sponsored by Aero Fastener. We're going to use some of their tools, but we're going to use some other tools as well to create this amazing spider light. And you can actually hang it outside or put it inside. <laughs> so let's jump into it right now. Let's start with the tools that you need. We're going to be using the Aero Fastener T25 low voltage stapler. And look at these staples. If you notice, they're actually curved. This is great because whenever you're trying to staple low voltage wires like lights, you want those to be secured underneath without cutting into the wires. We're also going to use a glue gun, which is optional, a jigsaw, which I love, and we're going to use a power drill. Now for the wood, you can use three quarter inch plywood or you can use half inch. I'm using half inch, but I tend to tell people use three quarter inch. It actually just works better when you're trying to hide the lights. Also, we'll need a jigsaw blade and a brad point drilling bit. This is so you get a nice clean hole and we need lights. <laughs> now you can use these lights, but I am actually gonna be using some that are slightly different, but any kind of lights that you use will work. Now the next step was to actually create the template that we're gonna use to cut out on wood. And I won't go through the exact step-by-step -step because I did do a similar video to this. I'll link to it up in the corner and down below. And also the blog post has step-by-step -step on how to do this, but it's simply using your printer and you're printing out multiple sheets and then you're taping it together and cutting it out. This is really cool because you can do a spider, you can do a pumpkin, a snowflake. I mean, really any design that you wanna create out of wood you can do this and it'll print out a PDF that you can put all together and create a, a large design. So just imagine if you've got a four by eight sheet of plywood, you can create some really cool things. And again, down below, you will find the blog post and I'm actually providing this for you at no cost. So go ahead and download this file. You can find it in the blog post. So the next thing is to trace this out. When you're tracing, make sure that it doesn't move on you and make sure that the lines are dark. And when you lift this up, if you find that you missed a spot, go ahead and fill that in. If you find that the lines are too light, trace those over. You can even use a black magic marker because when you're cutting this, you wanna see where those lines are so that you know exactly where you're cutting. So to cut this out, we're gonna be using a jigsaw and this is the tool that I absolutely love. I always tell people it's the least intimidating power tool to use. You can cut a lot of different things with it and I think it's perfect for making signs and all sorts of you know really creative things with wood. The main thing is make sure that your wood is clamped down to a table. You may not have a table like mine, that's fine, but make sure that you've got some space underneath. So when you're cutting, you're not hitting the table underneath. You don't wanna cut your table. <laughs> so be sure that when you've got this hanging off the side that you're able to get a secure cut and you're able to cut out all that excess. And also, here's another thing. When I'm cutting, I always try to stay to the outside line of the shape that I'm cutting, right? And this is really sort of up to you. You can cut on the line, you can cut to the right of the line. I tend to cut to the right of the line and you don't have to rush through this, go slow, so that you're cutting away all the excess and you've got some nice smooth lines. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just starting on the outside and I'm cutting out all these pieces. And if you don't know how to use a power tool like this, the jigsaw, I have a free 30 minute video that I put together on how to use the jigsaw. I will link to it up in the corner and down below. And I think after you watch that training, you will feel so much more comfortable and confident being able to use this tool because there's so many creative decorative things that you can cut out with this. And like I said, it's my favorite. And it really is sort of the foundation for a lot of decorative things that I cut out with wood. Now I still needed to cut out the feet. So I rotated it around, reclamped it, and then cut out the little small part in order to round out the feet. Now, I actually had a little bit of wood left over, so I made two spiders. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you have extra wood, make two, right? Well, once those two were cut out, I used 150 grit sandpaper to smooth those out and then followed it with 220. Next, I used a marker to plan where I wanted to drill the holes for the lights. And I would recommend that whatever lights you're using, let's say you've got a strand of 100 lights, 
try to do no more than 90 holes and that way you don't run out of lights before you fill all the holes. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I'll explain that in just a little bit. Anyway, I'm drilling here with a brad point drill bit. Again, it's going to give you a slightly better looking hole right? It's not going to tear through the wood. You want it to look neat and clean. And I'm using a sacrificial board underneath to help prevent tear out on the bottom side. The bottom, I mean, nobody's going to see the back of it, but you still don't want a lot of tear out. And that's why we use a board underneath to help with that. So I'm just drilling all around wherever I put the holes. And then next I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper and I'm going to smooth that out. What I like to do is put sandpaper on a drill bit and just smooth out those holes. <laughs> I don't know where I found that tip, but it's a really good tip. So you can do that and use 220 grit sandpaper. Next up is painting the spider. Now I tried using spray paint. I didn't like how blotchy it was. So I scrapped that idea and decided that I was going to just use the leftover paint that I had from my kid's bedroom. Remember when I did that black accent wall? Now, if you're gonna be using your spider outside, you're gonna to wanna to use some exterior paint, which is going to allow you to put it out in the elements. Here, this is not exterior paint, it's just interior. So I'm not gonna use it outside per se, but I just wanted to show you that you can <laughs> use it indoors or outdoors. You'll also wanna use a really small paintbrush to get in those holes. You don't wanna see the unpainted holes. It's not gonna look good, but then also if you're using it outdoors, you want to make sure that you're protecting that wood. So paint on the inside. Now, here's the thing. I used half inch plywood and you can tell that my bulbs here are a little long. So what I did was I used a little bit of hot glue so that I could only put just the very tip of that light through the hole and then I used the hot glue to secure it in place. And then I just started laying out all the other ones. Now, if you're using three quarter inch plywood, you're not gonna have to do this step with hot glue because your wood will be thicker and you'll be able to put it in there and it will sort of be the exact, almost the exact. And see what was happening is when I was putting those lights through there, too much of that light was poking through on the other side and I didn't want that. So that's where the glue actually really helped. So now it was time to secure these wires. This is why I love the T25 because this excess wire that you have, you don't wanna see this on the outside. So if you just twist that and lie it flat, you can secure this very easily with these T25 staples. And you'll see that it's got that little hump. So it's securing the staple, it's not gonna cut through the wire and it's gonna help keep that invisible. So when you're looking at this spider, you're not gonna see those wires hanging off the back. So I'd like to tell you just, you know, do a little bit of twist, lie it flat, and then secure it with the staples. Make sure that you don't go through the wire. <laughs> that actually happened with just one of the staples and I thought, oh my gosh, please don't short out the entire string. But thankfully it didn't <laughs> and I was able to continue with the project. I laid out where I thought the rest of the lights should go and then I just started gluing and securing. And when you're going up the spider's legs, and this is true even when you're doing letters or if you decide you wanna do another piece of wood art, you're gonna to have to backtrack at some point and that's okay. If you've got a long strand of lights, then it's fine to go ahead and move up one leg or one letter and then have to backtrack. But you wanna plan where you're gonna put your lights and then once you've planned them all out, then you just go through and start twisting and securing. And it's amazing how everything just sort of fits together. And when you're looking at it from the front, you don't necessarily see those wires, which is great. That's why I love this arrow fastener tool. Now for the battery pack, I ended up having to use two batteries, or I should say two strands of light because I didn't plan out my holes. And I ended up using two because I had more holes than I had lights. So I actually used a little bit of Velcro, or I think it was like a command strip. And I put that on the back of the spider. And then I used another strand of lights and continued filling all the other holes that were left over. And after the fact, I ended up drilling a few additional holes just because I was using another strand of lights and I had some extra light. So yeah. But anyway, once everything was done, I had to secure the other battery pack and I just took one of the wires, attached it to the back and just held it in place. And then the excess wire just wrapped it around and secured it. So now I've got two batteries, but if you're just doing one strand of lights, you won't have to do this with two, just one. 
I also plan to add a couple of eyes, which is why you don't see any lights here on the spider's head. So just using some white craft paint, I added some eyes. And it turned out so good. I love this spider. I actually wish I had done it bigger, but I think this is a pretty good size, especially for someone who's new to doing projects with a jigsaw and with a T25. You see all of the wiring is on the back. I've got the two battery packs, but when you turn it around, you can't see it. So that means you can really put it anywhere. And I also had put some D rings on the back so you can hang it on your wall put it on your mantle, set it outside. It looks great anywhere. Now remember, you can do this with something like a spider, but you can also do this with names. You can create any image you want really and transfer it to wood and add some lights to the back thanks to the Aero Fastener T25 low voltage stapler. So to find out more information about them, go to aerofastener.com. They are sponsoring this video and be sure to come back and subscribe because we're always doing fun things here at Thrift Diving. I will see you next video.